In today's world, when there's so much turmoil over everything, wouldn't you like to go back to a simpler time where Main Street was the biggest road in town? The malt shop was the place to be every evening and not a single black person in town. Find out when we all travel to Pleasantville tonight. Joining us back in the guest position is Rachel. Hello. I'm Matt. I'm Chad, and you're listening to the 122nd episode of We Used to Talk About This at Work. We're back. I'm feeling good. I'm exhausted, but I'm feeling good. We got Rachel back in the house. You know, it's going to be a fun time. How are you doing, Matt? I don't know, like, can you grow into being lactose intolerant? Yes. Like, because I made a good, nice grilled cheese sandwich with four different shredded cheeses and a sliced cheese. It was toasted on some Texas toast bread. It was real nice and some tomato soup. But I've been I've been fighting for my life on the toilet this morning. Yeah. And I'm just like, maybe I'm lactose intolerant now. Yeah, I mean, as we get older, our body kind of shifts and it doesn't want to take certain things that we're fine. Like, example, you know, you've talked about many a time on this show about you and like your recovery time from drinking. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I would feel like it's a similar theory, right? Thought, thought process. But I love dairy, though. Dairy is... <laughs> Give me something like spe very specific. Like, all right, you don't like <laughs> corn. Okay, I can do that. Dairy is a lot of different categories. Well, that's a fun. Like, question. I don't like, sh I don't like shrimp or something. Or my body doesn't like shrimp. I know. Stay away from shrimp. Dairy, it's a lot of things. Rachel, I know you are. There's a good gap between us three. Um. As you get old, as you've been getting older, have there been foods specifically that um you can't really handle anymore? Um, no, I I haven't found that at least lately, I and mean, I feel like my stomach might get upset a little more. Whereas, like my mom used to say, I had an iron stomach, like nothing bothered it at all. Now it gets bothered every once in a while but still not a lot so um yeah I mean I'm similar to Matt like I gotta watch how much dairy I intake and also like I don't know like I like ice cream it's not like I'm not like a person that loves it but like it's not a huge fan of me mm. yeah. I mean I was gonna say maybe it's the the amount of intake today for Matt you know, because it sounds like you had a lot of cheese in there. So, Maybe question. Just narrow it down. Question Was the cheese still good? Oh, no. Afterwards, I checked to make sure. <laughs> I, I, I did. I went back and I was like, Maybe was this old? But no, it wasn't old. Okay. <laughs> you're getting older, sir. You know, you're going to have to start ordering the hamburger, not the cheeseburger. Mm, pretty soon then my stomach ain't gonna agree with burgers i'm just gonna be eating like no lettuce meat, like a rabbit out of it yeah i mean turkey burgers are good as long as i still have chicken though mm. Mm. Yeah, we'll i'll be chicken. happy we'll see i mean you probably you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have to stop frying it though that's inevitable i'm about to do that to, I'm, I'm about to do that tonight too yeah gonna have to go to the baked or grilled but i will say um i've been pan searing chicken breasts and oh my god why did it take me so long to pan sear chicken breasts that good huh yeah like that nice crispy skin and stuff and it's just mm -hmm. like you know not as not as fatty you know since it's not being cooked like smothered in oil you know right throw it in the air fryer man it's a different taste. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 And I'm not saying it's a bad taste. I'm just saying it's a different taste. Right. Like uh, a couple of weeks ago, I pan seared some duck. 
baby. Oh my god, that duck was so fucking good. I'm trying to think. Have I ever had duck before? I don't think Ooh. I have. I love. <laughs> All right, I'm. A... When you come back to town, we'll we'll have we'll have a a, a quasi um uh, get together, and I'll make some duck. No more than six people. Um, but yeah, I'll make some duck. It'd be a good time. I but yeah, do I even know six people. <laughs> well, well I, I, I is my guest list. Oh, yeah. mm. I need to know who all over there before I before I say yes to this. <laughs> uh, you you gonna you gonna you gonna black people it? Yeah, I need to know. Me, you, Rachel, um, your wife, your son, or maybe not your son, depending on how loose y'all trying to get, and then you know. A couple of a couple of other people I may or may not know. You know, a, right. a, a nice a nice no. culture clash for you and Rachel. I, I don't I don't hate I don't hate that guest list. So yeah. we we will see so we'll set some things up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, is Rachel still gonna be my friend after that evening? Probably not. But you know, I'm a I'm a bit of a gambler, you know. We you know we're gonna I like, um I like to see where this goes. We're gonna we're gonna get the bowl out. We're gonna turn the pineapple upside down. It's it's gonna be a fun evening. Oh, so, it's, it's so that, don't that kind of that so, kind of night. So actually, don't bring your son. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, de- definitely not. <laughs> if, if we turn the pineapples upside down, then yeah, we 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 partying hard. So um, thanks, Rachel, for being a sport. I did but, not agree to this. <laughs> but for the um, record. But with duck, at least in St. Louis, it's it, it, it's not you got to go to sp- some specific places to to actually buy it. It's not mm-hmm. like you could just go to the grocery your local grocery store down the street. Right, right. So that's the only annoying thing about it. Have you ever had um, alligator? I feel like probably at some restaurant, maybe, maybe. I feel like. I feel like I have, but I'm not sure. Maybe. I, I was thinking of out of the box food and alligator is so good. Mm-hmm. Have you cooked it what or you just taste? done a restaurant? Chicken, right? Just had Every, it. Up. Everything tastes like chicken. It does. It tastes like chicken, but it tastes like you know that this this animal is in it's, the water. It it, it, it got like a, it's it's like it's weird. It's like. You get a chickeny taste, but you know that this animal belongs in water, if that makes sense, and it combines together. It's but no, a, um, it was at a rest. It, it was at a restaurant, right? But not no, it, cl- not clean water is the problem. It's like it's it's dirty, gross swamp water. Well, <laughs> well no, that you don't taste that. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know, but I'm like, I feel like part of that is probably running through your brain. Oh no, because it, it, it looked like little chicken nuggets, to, or not chicken nuggets. Um, uh, I did bites. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, like chicken bites type of stuff. Yeah. It was good. Have any of you guys um had deer? I don't feel like Rachel's the w- correct kind of white person to ask that question for, to, but uh, I still want to throw that out there. Yes. Yeah, I haven't had deer. Yeah, me too. I have had it. It's kind of gamey. It's good. Like The first time I had it is um, my friends were the, the hunting type, or I didn't yeah, they were friends, co work more co workers and friends. But uh, they were the hunting type, and they brought some beer, some deer jerky back. Mm-hmm. That was fire. And then they gave me some meat. And I always remember this because I used to do uh, security at uh, General Motors mm-hmm. back in the day in Winsville. And, you know, part of security, you have to rove around. And one time, a random a motorist hit a deer, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a dead deer on the side of the road, fresh. I remember they went through, like they called, they called like uh, the management for security to make sure they could take it. They called environmental, not environmental, but like wildlife or whatever, the city oh, wildlife yeah. and everything to make sure that they could take this deer. And they, at the end of the day, they took that deer home. <laughs> That's funny that they worked their whole shift and then took it. They didn't like, hey, can I use a little time? You know, take oh, this, man. take this deer home and prep it. Now, nah, because you know they might steal something while they're gone. 
Huh? A tie. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> All hands on deck. Um, yeah. So Samantha and I had a friend that um hunted and he gave us like a whole bunch of meat and she made like chili out of it it was all right but mm-hmm. like i said kind of gamey mm-hmm. um but yeah okay yeah, that's what our little cooking corner um well since we're on the topic of cooking and corners air uh rachel just got an air fryer i did i made chicken in it it was pretty good i mean it was a little Ooh. dry because i i i didn't leave it in for the correct Rachel, amount of time rachel uh went well went to the um air fryer from the perspective of an oven because she mm. and i'm not i'm not shitting on you to be to to, to just so we're on the same page but like you know an air fryer since it's a smaller device it's going to get hotter quicker so you can usually just half whatever the time would be in an oven a traditional oven Right. Yeah, like well, it. I think part of it was like I was looking in the recipe book and it didn't have chicken tenders in it, just like other chicken items. And then when I went to air fry it, I didn't realize you could like turn the time down. Oh, because so this is a brand new it. one. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's um, another thing. Like once you the more you play around with the air fryer, the more you'll be able to season it better, times better and stuff like that. The more you play around with it. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to yeah, be OK with having some messed up meals initially. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a time saver. It's a lifesaver. It's super convenient once you actually get into it. Yeah, that's right. that's what I'm hoping. But all right, um, you also have gone to the Muni. You closed the season out, Miss. Um, yeah, last show at the Muni um, was Sister Act. Before um, you tell us about the show, what mm-hmm. was the weather? Because this, t- for those that aren't aware, the Muni is an outside theater. So you are um, just part of the elements. Like you took me to a show last year. And it rained so, so hard during that show. And we were just sitting there while it was oh, raining, waiting on worse. it to pass. What is, is worse that, than rain? The state, is that the stage covered? Passed. No, they had they, to clean the stage. Yeah, but they restarted oh. the show. I've been at shows where they called a rain delay and then called the show off because it was like storming so bad. Mm. So at least they like reopened the show back to us. That's that was that was all right um but yeah the weather was actually kind of cool like it dipped down into the 70s well cool for summer yeah so i you know i wore my sweater but i didn't know it that. was nice no i you didn't, didn't know, know you were so oh um you're like you know you know i wore my sweater like cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but more importantly, the show was really good. It was um based on the first movie Sister Act. Um and it was it was just really fun. It was funny. The music was catchy. Like it was it was a good one to end on. And they also had fireworks at the end, like even more than Beauty and the Beast. Um, like the most I had seen was just like a couple at the end of Beauty and the Beast and they had their like pyrotechnics on stage. This was like a little mini fireworks show. It was really Interesting. cool. Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Is it because was... it's the it's the it's the end because of the weather? I mean the season. Um, yeah, they only do it during the summer and they only do seven shows. I kind of wish they would move it back and like start earlier in June and then end a little bit earlier because a lot of people are back in school by the last show. Mm-hmm. But um, like the ushers and stuff, there aren't yeah. as many guys pushing wheelchairs and things like that. You saw a documentary. Okay. Yes, I did see a documentary Um, with my I went over to my parents to watch it and um it was called the YouTube effect. Right now it's just available to be rented on Amazon Prime. I'm not sure if that's changing or not. 
but it was super interesting um it was like well it didn't talk super much about the origins of YouTube like you know um it it, it touched on the origins but then it kind of went more through the journey of it and how it's impacted the world or how the world has impacted it and um it was yeah it was just it makes you think um the only thing I will say was there's definitely like a political message there I believe what, what is it about well it's about YouTube and how it's impacted the world and also how people are using YouTube okay so um so that's where it gets a little political with like how people are using YouTube um but I mean I thought it it made some really good points it was really interesting and um I would I would definitely recommend it like I think it's important to think about those things and like you know the way we're using media and things like that so okay um do people still I'll, I'll ask my son this do kids still watch music videos they still make them i mean they make them but do like because i was thinking of youtube and everything when it first started and you know it was a lot of uh we used to watch music videos on there and stuff like that but i'm starting to think in today's age i know they make them but are the younger generation going to YouTube to watch a music video? That's a good question. Like the first thing that popped in my head when you asked this question was, you know, Usher put out a new song this week, right? Right, with mm-hmm. uh Kiki Palmer. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's got 3.2 million views. But then I was like, this isn't a good example because we need like a young people artist. Like he's an artist for our generation. Right, but also like I watched so, that video on Twitter and, I, and like the and whole thing, Instagram and things like that. Okay, well, no, I don't watch the whole thing though. I don't oh, to, so maybe you people need to really to... watch the whole thing, do you? I, I want to see how far they would go. Um, so I just looked up Ice Spice, and three weeks ago she dropped a music video for a song called Daily, and it has eighteen million views. So. It doesn't feel like it's as high as it should be for as popular she is. But, I mean, people are watching. And she's a young people artist, you know? Right. Yeah, so maybe some people are just diverging to Instagram. or. But also, I, f- I feel like you need to make these things more of a spectacle, right? So, like... Uh... <laughs> It's either like, oh man, we're doing something really cool visually, or here is my butt. That's right. Right. So, yeah. Um. So, like, w- with you bringing up like the effect of YouTube and I guess technology as a whole, it kind of got me to thinking about something that I was thinking about bringing up on the show, but I wasn't sure if I was going to. But like how you guys know that, you know, YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube TV, right? Uh Yeah. Which is essentially cable, but Google, Google cable, essentially. And like how we've gone so far, like around the band of like trying about this cord cutting stuff. And get it in away from like the traditional forms of um, receiving content, like how you know back in the day you had your your three or four channels, right? ABC, NBC, uh-huh. Fox, depending on how old you are, um, so forth and so on. Um, and then you got cable and satellite, which is the same thing. And then eventually we got Netflix, and we were like, you know, we don't need this cable because I don't want to pay this high price for ESPN if I'm not a sports person or I don't want lifetime or whatever. Right. And so we, you know, we, we've started the court cutting revolution and the uh, companies countered by um, all starting their own streaming services. And we're like, right. And we're like, 
I don't want to have to pay for all the streaming services to see my shows. Why can't they just do some sort of bundle to where I can get uh, Peacock and Paramount and Disney? And oh, wait, that's cable. Hmm? And so like it's cable, but it, but it's just in a different packaging. All right. Before they well, also you, it's it's times. Like you said, it was at a time where people didn't want the everything. Right. We went to, like you said, four channels. Then we can have all these channels. And we was like, yeah, we know we was gluttonous and we wanted everything. We wanted more Then. All right, never mind. Once I had my fill of everything, I realized it's cool, but I don't really have this food. I'm not eating. Right. So then and let me just cut it down. Oh, I thought you were about to say something. Well, I was, but then I was going to let you finish your thought. Oh, but now it's it's going back because just like I pay for Netflix. I don't watch everything on Netflix. And then Disney Plus. I don't watch everything on Disney Plus. So, yes, I want them to bundle some things together so I can eat a little bit off each plate. So it will come back to, like you said, it will come back to a cable type thing. So, like, the thing also is, like, money. Because a lot of people were fine paying for cable, but it's just, like, the price would always go up because of, like, those um those deals where you know sometimes you get like the the banner on the tv saying um the uh we failed to finish negotiations with fox so on this date we will no longer hold fox and then the end result was like the cable company is going to give fox more money a year to broadcast their channels and as a result they're gonna um put that charge on us the consumer by raising their overall prices Mm-hmm. And so, like, I feel like that's a big part of it too, because it's like, yeah, okay, if I'm paying like forty bucks a month for cable, I don't. If I'm not a sports guy, whatever, I don't watch ESPN, but this is a fine price. But if I'm paying one hundred and fifty dollars a month, and I don't watch sports, I don't watch Lifetime, I just want to watch the Sci Fi Channel and HGTV or whatever. What do I? Why am I paying all of this money? Like, that's the bigger rub. Right. Right. But then also, like, getting into the the mechanics of it, like I said, like, there a lot of it was, like, the deals with the specific networks. And ESPN especially, like, you were paying extra money for ESPN whether you watch sports or not. And as a result, ESPN has funded so many things for the Disney company. Like part of the reason why they were able to afford Marvel back in the day is because of all that extra money they were getting from ESPN specifically. And just what for about it, and then, hmm? and I'll say now because they got ESPN plus they got ESPN plus and they have all this extra shit with ESPN. Yeah, I'm just saying, like you know, well, you get one ESPN, you get them all, but specifically yeah. in 2002, ESPN by itself doing nothing, earned $626 million just by being attached to cable. And this is like with, you know, stuff going down. Like, I, I let me see if I can see um, 2010. Can it, Will you tell me how much it earned in 2010 without me having to do work? Um, no, it won't do that. But it and okay, in previous years it's earned billions of dollars just from like people yeah. having cable. But like we're just going back around and it's just like specifically with the streaming stuff, like we like a bundle or people are opting for I'm looking at you, Rachel, and also other people I know. People are opting for the Hulu, for example, with ads. And so mm-hmm. One, you're paying for the streaming service, but they're also pumping ads at you like it's TV. So they're double the companies are double dipping. They're getting your money. They're also getting ad dollars, like back in the TV days. Like we're just fucking going full circle here. So we just go back to cable. I mean. <sighs> Everything wouldn't be so segmented. 
like you know all uh, so i'm just all, thinking like so uh, all the streaming services right like mm-hmm. espn all that stuff is fine so like i mean netflix all the stuff on netflix would that just be a channel or like how would that break down on cable i mean it could and be all a, the streaming stuff it could be a channel it could be on demand like on demand was the thing mm, yeah I would be more curious about what that would mean for TV shows. Like, would they have to then regulate, like, or would they be regulated to only do, like, one episode a week and not dump the whole thing all in one go? Or, like, how would that look? Well, you know how, like, there were, like, multiple uh, ESPNs, multiple HBOs, HBO 1, HBO 2. You'd just be like, all right, Mm -hmm. on HBO 3, uh, on Netflix 3, um to on um November 30th or whatever we're dumping all the new episodes of Lincoln Lawyer. So it's a marathon, you know. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't know, okay. it's just um, like um but the, w- w- I mean it just had to be on, on demand on, on demand type of thing yeah. to where hey, we're going to dump all of this so you can watch it at your leisure, but there's other stuff I mean, it would have to go back to that too, once a week type of thing. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's like we said we didn't want this, but like the systems how are like self-correcting back to what they were, but slightly different and worse for the consumer. I agree. Because everything is going up in prices. Every streaming service, everything is going up. Right, but it's also like even if they weren't going up, like back twenty twenty twenty, let's say twenty nineteen, late twenty nineteen, when everybody's stupid streaming services was up, everybody, a lot of people was all like, oh yeah, this streaming service is like five dollars a month or whatever. Okay, cool. It's not just the price. I don't want all these streaming services. I don't want to have to subscribe to. AMC, the the TV channel, plus to see whatever TV show, because it's not on Netflix anymore. I don't want to have to subscribe to Peacock to see Friends, not Friends, um, uh, The Office. I don't want to have to subscribe to HBO to see Friends, you know? Right. But then that's where you get the whole um, Android iPhone thing to where if you, you just pick whatever side you want and I mean, some people do just pick, all right, even though Hulu, for example. I loved Hulu when I was in the States. I can't get Hulu here. So now I don't have Hulu. And I'm like, sure, there's stuff on Hulu I wanted to watch or I wish I could watch, but they don't have it here. So I've had adjusted my life to live without Hulu. Fair. So just some, you got to adjust your life to go whatever one you, you really do not want a fair point but i feel like Uh, apple is like netflix is like my apple i've been with netflix since the dvd days and i switched it out and just like i've been with apple so long nah man i'm about to ride it to the wheels come off with uh netflix i feel like a lot of people have that blind loyalty to netflix like they do nothing but raise their prices and we all stay yep yeah yeah but then they throw out those gems here and there. They dangle that care with that Lincoln lawyers and things like that. I'm like, <laughs> you right, Netflix. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I wasn't going nowhere. Where, that was, I, that, I was just mad at that moment. You know how I get sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, keeping on track with the streaming services, um, you are paying for stars. Oh, just for the summer. <laughs> um, not not usually, not year round, but they had like a one dollar per month for three months or whatever deal. And I really wanted to watch Prime the days. new Outlander series. Prime days. Um, I don't remember what it was for exactly. Okay. But well, um what is yeah, Outlander? So I- yeah, I finally got around to watch to starting Outlander and finished it really quickly. Um, well, to the mid season finale, I guess there there's more to come. 
but it's been really good this season. It hasn't what been as like, is Outlander? Oh, what is Outlander? Um, it, well, it's based on a book series about this woman who accidentally time travels to um from I guess World War II era to Scotland um right before the British kind of take over and um that 1945 1945 and she transfers back to 1743. There you go. And um and then it follows her like she her journey she ends up you know meeting people and then she ends up traveling back and forth through time a little bit um she has a daughter that daughter is also a traveler so like we're we're further on in the series now we're like um her her daughter's grown up um. Oh, is this one of those situations since they're time travelers, her and her daughter are literally the same age? No, 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 no. No, she's she's much older than her daughter. It's it's all age appropriate. (laughs) But um but yeah, so um this season is I would say less like triggering than other seasons. Other seasons have had some difficult to watch scenes and such an example has been a little bit just like um sexual abuse and things like that um where it just it's just really hard to watch um but this mm. the season still has like war in it so there's still some like scenes that are difficult but not as difficult like that um it's kind of going between um the revolutionary war in the american colonies and then um so i guess the the 80s um the 1980s in scotland so um so it's been it's been pretty cool like it's still staying pretty consistently good so I'd I'd still recommend keeping up with it if if you've already started or um you know starting it I if saw, you haven't I saw already. The, seven seasons. How many episodes per season? Yeah. Um I should have done my homework before I came on this. Uh I don't remember oh, how okay. many episodes per season. 83 altogether, but let me see how many per season. Uh, I kind of fluctuate 16, 13, 12, 8, and then 16. So around a lot. 13-ish episodes, yeah. Because this is not an American production, right? I don't think so, no. Well, season 6 had 8 episodes. But That's season 5 had 12. Season. Yeah. Oh, maybe it was affected by COVID or something like that. Yeah, could have been also could have been depending on what part of the story they're following from the books maybe that's fair all right so overall you're liking half the first half of season seven yes yeah i would recommend it it's really good okay um and especially if you like historical fiction that's a it's a good series to watch okay and then you're doing something that Matt and I should be doing, but we aren't. Yes, you should. Um, I've been watching Only Murders in the Building on Hulu. I know one of you at least hasn't even finished the second season. Or maybe but... both of us. <laughs> maybe both of you. <laughs> Matt's, Matt needs to think about it. I do I see season one. I don't know. I don't think I've seen season two yet. We'll oh my it. gosh, both of you. I know you started it. I know yeah, you started Yeah, then it was like, I watched like the first episode. I was like, I'll get back to this. And <laughs> never went Never back did. To this. It's but it's so funny, whenever good. I see pictures of, uh, what's her name? 
Uh, Selena Gomez. Yeah, whenever I see pictures of her, I'd be like, oh, yeah, she's on that show I should watch. And then I just keep strolling. <laughs> <laughs> I feel well, like I'm like at least halfway through season two. You both should finish up and then get started on season three so I can talk about it with you. I'll let you handle Cause, that, Rachel. Because <laughs> there's like, I, I know that they have like celebrities or something, like famous celebrities in they this new season, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, in this season so far, they've had Paul Rudd and Meryl Streep um, so as I'm, recurring characters. I'm looking at my account here. I've watched the first five of ten episodes of season two. Hmm. Hmm. What made you fall off? Well, you know, it's a weekly show. And so, like, I watched it. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying if I could have benched it, I would have finished it. It's just I watched the fifth episode and I was like, oh, okay. And then life happened. Yeah. I, I'm I'm the exact opposite um, for Hijack with Idris Elba. Remember I told you I was going to tell you how it ends? Mm-hmm. It's a weekly one. So it the next one dropped and I was like, hmm, I'll just wait till it finishes. And it was like three weeks later, right? Each mm-hmm. one it was like three episodes later. So then like I was like, ah, oh, when I was going to Apple TV, oh, they all dropped. Hmm. 58 minutes an episode, huh? Right, you can't do that, man. Uh, <laughs> I was like this, yeah, I'm not going to watch this. And that's another thing with like Netflix and stuff. When I be seeing shows like I've started, I'm like, how many episodes left? Five. How long are these episodes? 50 some minutes? Because that's time. I need, give me a good 30, 40, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. Okay, we can we can yeah. rock with this. But when it's or, like almost hour Matt, long, I'm like. Matt, how about this? How about we make movies instead of fucking TV shows? That's another thing. I would rather watch an hour, two, hour and a half, two hour movie than watch two episodes of a 50 minute movie or TV show. Yeah. Right. Because like I sent you guys a trailer to some I think it's going to come on Hulu about like um, some weird stuff happening at this girl's the, the, she, she's the only black woman that, that works in the office and then they hire a new black woman. And then, like, weird stuff starts to happen. Uh-huh. I'm like, oh, this show looks interesting. This show, this movie looks interesting. Okay. And then it's like, on this date, the series begins. So I was like, okay, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out before it even <laughs> begins. Like, you know, like, cause it's like, or even that Lakeith Stanfield show, I think it's coming to Apple Plus, where uh, it's kind of like a, yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of spooky. I think it comes out either the end of this month or sometime in September. It's going to be like a spooky show. And I'm like, this is really good looking. And then I'm like, oh, it's going to be a TV show. Because it's like, especially for like horror TV shows, which is also that other one that I referenced. It's like, how are you sustaining this for 10 hours? You know? Right. That's fair. I think they've done a good job on Only Murders in the Building. Like, I didn't think they could keep up the quality. Like, have and having a murder every season, you know, like that's kind of a lot. But um they've managed to keep it interesting. So I'm 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 hooked on it. We know. You're hooked you're you like that show so much, Rachel, that you're watching ads. That's and- true. <laughs> And I'm I'm gonna say, you know, if we if we were one of those podcasts that's like um she's a 10 but <laughs> she's a 10 but she watches Hulu with ads. <laughs> she's a 10, but she has poor people who, yes. <laughs> oh man. I know. You're you're gross to me. Um bring us around home, Rachel. You got one more topic. I do have one more topic. So, She's, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Hold up. I just put your soapbox down. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um. Well, before I get into why I'm bringing this up, I just have a general question for you guys. Do you-, you think? Wait. Go did ahead. you click that link in the and I put it in the outline, Matt? I, I did click it. No, I said Matt. I did not. Oh. I did not. Okay, but I know so what this is referencing. Oh, okay. okay. But so okay. I know what this is referencing. So okay. what's your question, Rachel? 
Well, before we get into that, do you think that people should wear prosthetics to change their appearances for biopics? Or do you think they should just go? I mean, I'm not talking about like colored contacts and dying hair. That's that's, well, that's not a big deal. That's not but, really a prosthetic, is it, though? Right. But like wearing prosthetics on your face or so you know, things did, like that. Did you like The Whale, Rachel? That's my question. I did not watch The Whale. That's fair. Matt I didn't, watched I didn't it see for that me. shit. I didn't see that shit. So that's fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm scrolling through a list here. So I'm like, oh, hold up here. I didn't see that shit either. Um, I mean, and, okay. I, I, I'm about to, if I'm on my island by myself, and if I sound ignorant, whatever. I don't care. He did good. Brendan Fraser did good in that with the fat suit or whatever. And then should they, should a hefty person play this role? Uh, no. Nah. I mean, they could have. But I, I don't see a problem with it. To answer your question, do I see a problem with prosthetics? If it if it looks like the person you are going for, then no, I don't have a problem with prosthetics. So does uh, it take away from the reality if someone doesn't wear a prosthetic and doesn't look like the person? Yes, they then it wouldn't need, be a biopic, right? Mm, they need to they need to come hard as fuck with the acting, in my opinion. Also, in some of these biopics that they do, people don't really fully know what that person looks like. Like a like a low key biopic, you know? Like That's true. um what's that one with Elliot Ness? Like um uh, Kevin Costner played them played him in the nineties, that gangster movie. Don't know what you're talking. Okay. Well, let's redact that from the record. Um, uh, my prime example is um, Steve Jobs, the movie mm-hmm. with Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender is a tall ass fucking um, uh, motherfucker, handsome ass, like built ass beautifully sculpted ass you get what i'm saying you know i'd fuck michael fassbender mm. but i'm just saying it's like uh from some nordic country he don't look a goddamn thing like steve jobs but he acted his fucking ass off in that movie counterpoint oh, that guy. ashton kutcher he, he looks a lot like a young steve jobs and that movie was shit and so was his acting in it so even if you look the part if you're not bringing everything you got to the table, sorry, if everybody isn't bringing everything that they got, like the script isn't in, on point, the director ain't on point, the fucking costumes ain't point, all that shit ain't on point, it don't matter if you look exactly like the person. I I, I agree with that. Yeah, so, if that if the act is on point, then you can overlook this other stuff. And a, a point that you made earlier, yeah, a lot of this stuff majority of people don't know what these people look like anyway right so it's kind of moot but also you know people you know actors do that shit for awards like the prime example charlie Theron, monster she did all that stuff and she got an oscar we just said fucking brendan fraser he did all that shit and he got an oscar bradley cooper that's who we're talking about bradley cooper wants an oscar but is it necessary? No, because I don't know what Leonard Bernstein looks like. So if Bradley Cooper would have just been Bradley Cooper. I've been like, okay, do your thing, bro. He wants an Oscar. That's usually why people fucking do biopics anyway. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So I I'm very torn, like. I know that the family is defending his Because they got a check. They got a check. Let's be clear. I they mean, got that, a fucking check. That's true. Okay, wait. Be, right before continue, mm-hmm. what specifically are you talking about? So mm-hmm. in a biopic about Leonard Bernstein, Bradley Cooper plays Leonard Bernstein. Um, and he's wearing a prosthetic nose in the movie to look more like Leonard Bernstein. Um, 
What? He doesn't look like him with that prosthetic, though. Yeah, I don't think the prosthetic nose helps at all. And also, I have torn feelings about it go. because Here, this is why I got the soapbox <laughs> out. Right. Oh. That, that, that's where that's where I'm waiting for her to go to say this part. So I have a question. So uh, for the YouTube listeners, I'm going to put a photo, a side by side photo of Leonard Bernstein and Bradley Cooper with his prosthetic in here. Because just for the YouTube people. So you that, switch over. that's helpful. Um, I mean, I, so like I said, I'm torn. I know some people are calling it Jew face. Which bothers me because, like, a it's um it's like it's implying that people need to wear a prosthetic nose to play a Jewish person, right? Um, which is kind of offensive. But then, on the other hand, like, is it okay to wear a prosthetic to look more like the person you're playing? Like, I mean, are we not even going to talk about how you know Bradley Cooper isn't Jewish? Yeah, Bradley Cooper isn't. Jewish. I mean, so even if he wasn't using the prosthetic, it would still be Jew face, right? Or, no, wait, wait, no. I think I believe that's called Jew fishing. Yeah, I would. I guess it would be a different term. Yeah, just like black fishing. You know? But I mean, I, I, I don't think I can say like non-Jewish people shouldn't play Jewish people because I'm a big fan of Mrs. Maisel and. Rachel Brosnahan is not Jewish and she plays a very Jewish Mrs. Maisel. I mean, what where where's the line between um what what they what do they what do they say when rappers still black shit? What white rappers still like shit, Matt? Um um uh, homage. Yes, but what, like where where's the line between like you're paying tribute to something as opposed to like you're doing a caricature? Still it right. Right. Um Yes. Yeah. When I read this, I was like, I'm not part of the Jewish community, so I don't have a dog in this fight. Uh, I didn't know that him having a prosthetic nose to look more like the person that he's portraying. So is this a stereotype of Jewish people? A is stereotype this a thing that, of like, Jewish people is that they have big noses, yes. Mm, that that beautiful dead air. Well, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, if, if for example... Um, oh, I'll give you one right now. Zoe Saldana. Well, yes, that's what that's when I came to mind where she looked nothing like the person. But I Nina, mean, Nina Simone's to be specific, and she basically did blackface in that movie, right? Um, yeah. So if I'm trying to think of an actress, so if Holly Berry was playing yeah. whoever, mm, and she had, well, I can't think of. Anybody, but like, say how she was had a. Oh, here we go. Here we go. If Zendaya uh, was playing a young version of Gladys Knight, yes, <laughs> and she had a prosthetic nose or something oh, like that. I, I meant the skin tone. Well, not. I mean, I don't want to do skin tone because that, that's obvious. But oh, I'm saying, I see. Like, I, I see. I see. I see. Somebody who having a prosthetic nose, uh, uh would people be like, ah, uh, that's anti-black or that's racist against black people because stereotypically black people have big noses or something like that that's what i'm oh. trying to come up with oh i mean so if it was a different well there's person. other factors in play there because like in my example like zendaya is half black mm -hmm. so that's kind of moot they would it would need to be like two white people but i hear what you're well, saying Right, because I'm thinking like like if actress A was playing trying to play, play actress B and they were both black, but they needed a prosthetic or something like that to look more like them. If I don't think that there would be a thing like, oh, it's you're racist against black people, or that's a black stereotype that black people have big noses. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, but in this specific instance, yes, they're both two white men, but one is from um. 
a um a group that uh a, an oppressed group would it okay so then my question would be would it be different if who was this guy again bradley cooper if bradley cooper was mm -hmm. jewish then would it be a problem it would still be a problem yeah but because it they're still enhancing his nose to now, fit the role well the the it, they wouldn't be saying he's jew facing and i'm looking at the the word they're using is also jew nose and jew fishing it wouldn't be that it would just be like why are you playing into stereotypes yeah i feel like that would be the the conversation because once more looking at this he did that this this prosthetic nose does not fucking look like that man's nose it's like, like very pointy and shit right right so like the like the, when they went to the, the the prosthetic person they were like all right leonard bernstein please and he then they was like he jewish right yeah all right you want these photos for reference no i got it i got it he jewish that's all i needed to hear right i never knew that this was a thing about jewish people and noses uh, that's because you're not a terrible person. Well, you are a terrible person, but you're not racist against Jewish people. That's not right. You're not prejudiced against Jewish people. Yeah, but to if you don't know the slurs, then you're not prejudiced against them, right? But isn't that part of being aware? Hmm? Like knowing the stereotypes to avoid them? No. It's, I mean, only when it's been brought to your attention, because, for example, Rachel, if you've never hung out with black people and, and she, your friends are and your friends do not say racist stuff or whatever. So you wouldn't know the things that the tor not turmoil, but you wouldn't know the offensive stuff that people say about black people because you're no, just not I, around it. So I know I get what she's saying, because if she didn't have black friends. And they're like, oh, hey, we're going to have like a potluck. And she brought watermelon and chicken because she likes watermelon and chicken. But she isn't aware of those stereotypes. I get what you're saying, Rachel. Okay. Right. But, but you don't. But I'm saying she won't know that to somebody. Right. Educates but, her, lets her know. Right. But if she. But right. But like outside looking in, if these people don't know Rachel and she brings chicken and watermelon to an event, they don't give a fuck if she didn't know that. Of course. But I'm saying what I'm saying is in my everyday travels, <laughs> how am I supposed to know that this is a thing that Jewish people or is um or not oppressed or what's the word I'm looking for? Slur? No. That this is a thing against Jewish people about have them having big noses. Did you know this before this uh story came out? Rachel, I mean Chad? <laughs> um yes <laughs> yes so um, how, how did you how did you know about this this stereotype thing i've watched a lot of media and i've seen some analysis on like certain medias and like how um that was not a fair representation of group x my next question is this a thing like or um like you know, blackface and the watermelon chicken thing. Like in in history and past, has this been a thing where I want to look like a Jewish person, so I'm automatically going to put on a big nose? This is a thing that people have been doing for years. I don't think people necessarily put on big noses to look Jewish, but I, it is the. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I wouldn't say that they were doing menstrual shows of Jewish people. But like, you know, um, like, you know, back in the day when they just do those in today's eyes, blatantly racist, like cart character caricatures or cartoons or like posters and stuff. And yeah. they like, oh, yeah, uh, Jew we need shorthand to show that this is a Jewish person. So yeah, let's yeah. give them a nose bigger than their face. Uh -huh. And then and then there's their scooping up money or something like that because you know that's another you know stereotype of jewish people that one I do also, know. Yes. yeah there's also a thing about looking jewish like um like some people will say like oh you don't look jewish or 
you do look Jewish and then, you know, stereotype that person or. Oh, another so, thing is like a stereotype of, oh, yeah, um, for your bat mitzvah present, we got you a, a nose job. Yeah, there, there's jokes. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see the the joke in that, but okay. I mean, okay. it's not funny. It's right. not funny to you, Rachel, because these are your people. But if you if you were consumed with hate, it would be funny. Right. I'm just not consumed with hate. Well, against your own people. Right. Everybody's a little bit racist, Rachel. Yeah. That but... reminds me of uh, Quentin Brunson. Everybody a little bit gay. Um. Well, yes, we all we all are on the what's what's the spectrum? What is, yeah. What's that? What's that called, Rachel? Yeah, it's a spectrum. Okay, okay. Um, but no, I was referencing a musical, man. Oh. Musicals. Maybe you will like it. It's all. It's about puppets. It's basically. I, oh, no, I, I was about to, I, I was about to make a joke, but I was like, had to think about it. Nah, that 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 <laughs> wouldn't rock. <laughs> wait, wait, you don't know what I'm referencing, Rachel? You don't? I no, I know what you're referencing, but I've never seen it before. Oh, it's very dirty. It's but ba- basically, it's like adult Sesame Street, Matt. Oh, so they all have puppets. They're all puppets, but like they're like encountering very adult situations, but with puppets. And they're singing? Yeah. So, like, there's a song called Everybody's a Little Bit Racist. Oh. And then there's, like, stuff about drugs and, like, the Bert and Ernie insert are gay. Stuff like that. Hmm. That reminds me of the Dave Chappelle episode when he had uh, the adult puppet show like Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. But um, pushing forward, we really got off track there, but we'll be all right. We'll see how much of that I keep. Um, uh, Matt, you saw a movie that Rachel and I did not like. Yes, I saw Elementals. And um, refresh my memory, why didn't you like Elementals? That's a good question, Matt. Um, I f- remember one feeling like the main character was weak. Like I understand he's trying to be more in tune with his emotions and whatnot, but it just was a bit much um the race allegory was weak what else do you remember rachel this was like two months ago yeah i just remember like it wasn't really anything new the logic didn't really hold up in the world yes yes it like things didn't really make sense like when they built that wall or like when he fused it together like couldn't have couldn't all of the fire people have done that sooner like yeah and then the um the city's like nah we not gonna do our job because we don't like one person what what Mm -hmm. what oh and then also i didn't believe the love story because she was like hey hold up chill out bro and he's like i gotta report this i gotta report this it's like bro what are we doing here this man is literally about to shut down your family's business and you falling in love with him yeah, and also I didn't like her, the main character. But she, was she, thick. she, but she, she, she was thick though, man. I did see, I did notice that. I did peep <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Pixar's pick, pick, some uh, nasty motherfuckers. That's right. Uh, it's like you, it's the tired, not tired. We are tired. It's the old thing about this person doesn't like this person, and this. It's like it wasn't good it was kind of like the same i know you've said this before where you was like oh if you just take out uh elements and put something else then it'll be like another movie from before it's right. basically the same thing um like my son been wanting to see this for a while so we finally watched it he was happy with it i was like yeah this say this ain't it this ain't what, what did he like about it he wasn't being critical about the story and that's another thing (laughs) like like we watch a lot of movies and so we're like hey we don't want dribble and people that don't watch a lot of movies was like this is fine this is fine right i'm just happy to be here 
Right. That's and that's what it is. He he enjoyed the, I don't know, the colors, the the, <laughs> the animation or whatever. But it's just, I've seen this before in a different, in a different shape. Yes. And I, yeah, like we said, just a lot of it was weak. Like I did not believe their love story at all. And like them hating somebody because they're different thing with no real, I get that. We'll address that later on, but it's <laughs> give me a different packaging of this, of this story. Yeah. Well, right, give me a new was... story. Take that back. I, I don't want, I don't want the same package. Give me a new story. I thought it was also like tough that. They didn't know if they would die if they touched each other, basically. Yeah. Oh, and that's another thing. That like really they intentionally didn't show any inter I'm just gonna say interracial, any any interracial couples into like the prologue. When I feel like they should have normalized that it's not weird for the elements to mix. It's just irregular for these two specific elements to mix. Right. Water and plants should be fine and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just like, I I appreciate Pixar being like, using the, 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 the dusting off the old template, what if blank had feelings, right? Mm -hmm. But you need to fully think about the world that you're building inside out. We don't really have questions about how that world works because it was fleshed out well enough. Monsters, Inc., same thing. Toy Story, we do have a couple questions, but overall, we good. We good, you know? But then it's like you do this and then you kind of just shorthand a lot of stuff. Right. So, I don't know. They need to flesh it better like Zootopia when everybody was like, they, they explained that, that land well. Yes, although it didn't really get into like interracial relationships, but maybe if there's ever a sequel, well, there's going to be a sequel because they made a lot of money. But sorry, interspecies relationships. Interspecies. But I do like how like they were like <laughs> parts of it did feel a little like I don't think we should be encouraging this stereotype like the bunnies had all the family had all the kids. Oh, As, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna finish that thought, but you guys know what I meant. Uh right. what's your last point, Matt? Um, that is it. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna just do a story time. Um so I'm sorry for the bleeps that are gonna be in the story, but I'm not gonna put my daughter's name out there. But um, so my daughter and my grandmother both have the same name. Uh, we named my daughter after my grandmother. And so, like, um, I jokingly say we're going to go see, you know, big or whatever. She has a my grandmother has a family nickname, so that's what my daughter calls her. But the problem is um they're the same person, like my daughter. And my grandmother are the same person, just literally 80 years apart. And so we'll go over there and hang out. And it's mostly fine. Like, they get along super fucking well because once more, they're the same person. But the problem is when we go out, that's when I want to kill both of them. Like, um, my grandmother is at a point where she was always kind of like this even before, like, some stuff starts to set in. But, like, she just wants to go to the same place over and over. So we always go to the IHOP when we're together. And it's always something. My grandmother's mad about something in the menu. My 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 daughter's mad that she can't run around the uh, the restaurant. Or if I go to the bathroom, she's like, dude, you leave me? You leaving me? <laughs> what is this? So like today we went to IHOP and um my grandmother's upset because like She's in here so often they know her order. So they had her coffee ready and all this stuff. And she's like, I don't drink my coffee until my food comes. And I'm like, I've literally seen you drink your coffee as <laughs> soon as we sat down. And like, that's another thing, too. Like, she's at a point where, like, you know, low key dementia is setting in. So, like, she's super forgetful. And I know you're not supposed to be confrontational with people when they're in that state. But I'm just like, I know I need to let a lot of this stuff go. But I'm like, 
no, I've seen you drink coffee first thing when we come in. What are you talking about? All right. So that's basically what she said today. And so when the food came and uh, it was she went to drink her coffee, she was complaining that it was cold. And I'm like, because you let it sit for 30 minutes. And she's like, well, I didn't, uh, I would have drank the coffee, but I didn't have sugar. They just brought the sugar out. And I'm like, they don't bring the sugar out. It's it's stationary. It's next to the salt and pepper. What are you talking about? And so she's mm-hmm. pissed at me because I'm correcting her. And my daughter is like losing her fucking mind because, you know, we can't be bouncing about. And I'm like, okay. So as we're leaving, she calls us. When I say she, I mean my daughter, my my grandmother. She's she's more low key with her tantrums. Um, she mm-hmm. she she complained up and down about that food. Um, there was nothing wrong with it. I I cleaned my I licked my plate clean. Um, my daughter caused the biggest scene when we were getting her out of her high chair, and like everyone's looking at us, and then she's looking at everybody saying bye bye, and they're like, oh, she's so cute. I'm like, no, she's not. She's the fucking worst. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't want this. Both of you guys can fuck off. How about that? <laughs> so yeah, so that was the morning. And then this afternoon we went to a, a birthday party. A friend of mine, um, let's just say her stepdaughter, um, had a uh, birthday party at a like a kind of like a you guys remember in Discovery Zone? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh wait! Oh wait! I'm sorry. I keep fucking forgetting how young Rachel is. <laughs> um, so this doesn't like a tube type place. Like, are you old enough to remember like a McDonald's like play play? Oh yeah. Play play what? Playhouse? What what was it called? Man? Yeah. Playland. Play sure. Playland. Yeah. So there really weren't tubes or anything like that, but it's just like you climb up in the thing. It's kind of like mazes, and it's got like giant slides you can go down, and it's like a whole bunch of different ways you can get in. And it's like big enough for like a you know the parents to go into with their like somewhat smaller kids, and like I lost so much weight today, like climbing up in this shit trying to keep up with her, and I'm just like I'm pouring sweat, and I'm like we're doing like happy birthday song, and my my daughter's like squirming because I'm holding her and because she, she wants to get back in the in the shit, and I'm like bro, we're we're guests here, you got to be cool, dude. Like we got we got to be you know. <laughs> And I'm like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm like, I, I know I sweat through all my deodorant. I know I'm funky, you know, like just standing next to these people. Like I'm just all <laughs> self-conscious and shit. And something that I'm not used to is like parents talking to me. Cause like usually when I'm with my daughter, I don't really like taking her out by myself. Um, Cause like my, my, my main objective is to just make sure she doesn't hurt herself or like be a burden to other people like you know mm-hmm. you know i don't you don't want that kid that people are talking about so like i'm right. like laser focused on her but then like the last few times i've been out and like parents have been talking to me and i'm like i'm not really engaging them for real for real. like i'm answering their questions but i'm not like oh what's your kid's name what's your name what you know blah 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 because i'm like i'm just focused on my daughter and so mm-hmm. like that happened several times today and i'm like I feel so fucking rude and bad when somebody's trying to just pitch a con- like a dad was in the ball pit with his daughter and he's like, Oh, how old is your kid? Oh, mine is six. Blah, 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 blah. My name's blah, 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 blah. I was like, uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. My name's chat. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, I just gotta make sure I got, yeah. So these are my random thoughts. Uh, Matt, as a parent that has gone, you've gone on solo missions with your dad, with your dad, with your son. What's your take on that specifically? I get it. But like once they get a little bit older, then you're going to be like, I mean, you're going to. You're going to loosen that a little bit. There is times where it's like we've gone to places like that and I don't watch him like he's up doing it. Like I keep a general idea. Like I'm not watching him go through it, like like watching him, but like I have a general idea of where he's at. And then after X amount of time. If I don't see him, then I'm like, all right, what's going on type of thing. But I get that because you're trying to protect them. But eventually, as they get older and they start becoming a person, mm-hmm. then you uh, loosen up and you're like, okay, you can do stuff. Cause I, I remember the first time I let my son go. We was in Walmart and I let him go 
to the bathroom by himself. Oh, uh, oh, I, for, I forgot about that, man. I forgot about that. Did you what? see that? In the group? You were probably asleep. Did you see that in the group chat? I went to the restroom at IHOP. I'm about <laughs> to go pee. And like a little like six, seven year old walks in. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you told me that. And I immediately <laughs> walk out because I'm like, I'm not getting accused of shit. <laughs> right. But like we was in the checkout line and the bathroom is there. I can see the bathroom. So I can see who goes in. I can see who goes out. So he's in there and I'm like, I was taking him so long because nobody's went in there, but nobody's mm -hmm. came out yet. So I don't know if there's somebody in there. So then, like, it's been like three minutes now. I'm like, what's going on? And I start getting worried. And I'm like, all right. I say, hey. And I told the lady behind me, I'm like, hey, my son's in the bathroom. I'll be right back. And then she's like, I was like, he watched my spot. Because it was like maybe like two people in front of us. And then she was like, okay. So as I get out and I go there, he comes out. And I'm like, was anybody in there? And I went in and then like that. But it's like stuff like that to where if I don't have eyes on him when he was younger, then um, I used to be super worried. But yeah. now he got his phone. He's out there. He yeah. goes and does I things. mean, he's 37. So, you know, he's straight. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> as, long, as long as once, once they start to make complete sentences and everything like that, then they're pretty much self-sufficient. I look forward to that because like, I don't want to come off as rude, but I, I just want to make sure she's good, you know. I think it's also harder with when there are other kids around too. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if that's. I know I'm not a parent, but I. I'm, I nobody shutting you down. <laughs> We're listening. Yeah. Um. Well, when she I already was... had defense that we didn't say nothing. <laughs> right. How many times have people told you to stay in your fucking lane when you try to <laughs> to share some advice, Rachel? That's an actual question. <laughs> um, probably too many, and that's why I had that reaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, I just remember when I when I worked with kids um for a couple of years um with the after school programming, and I had to take a handful of them to the museum to um go to this like camp that they held at the museum for like just for the week or whatever. Some people weren't watching their kids, and then the instructor wasn't making sure all of the kids were good to go, and it put me in a bad situation because, like, I was focused on the kids I was responsible for, but then other kids were getting left behind, and it's like, like, do I, you know, the kids were older, so do I like let them go and help this one kid who's fallen behind, even though like he's not my responsibility technically, right. or do I just right. like stay with the kids I'm responsible for? It was, it, it, it gets, it gets tough. I get that. Right. Yeah. All right. You guys ready to do this? Ready. Yes. That brings us to this week's discussion of Pleasantville. There's a place where life is simple. People are perfect. And everything is black and white. Honey, I'm home. Two 1990s teenagers find themselves transported to a 1950s sitcom where their influence begins to profoundly change the world. All right, so um, I have an idea of where everyone's hearts and minds lay on this one. So we're going to start with Matt, but, but positives only. Positives. Um, positives. Rachel. Um, <laughs> positives. You're um, switching this up. Matt, 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 Matt is taking too long. <laughs> Matt's taking too long. Um, so I um I thought that like the contrast of the two worlds was pretty good like having the kind of one parent household and then where all the teachers are talking about like the doom and gloom of the real world and then they go to the TV world and it's a two parent household and like everything so much simpler 
so we're gonna talk yeah, about the history of Main Street. Nice and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's at the end of Main Street, the beginning of Main Street. Um, yep. Duh, duh, <laughs> silly. Yeah, so I liked that. I liked the them mirroring like how they were fighting over the transistor radio in the TV show, and then they were fighting over the remote in real life when they transitioned to the TV show. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I I mean, I liked the kind of idea of, well, should should I, is it okay if I go a little bit deeper into the movie or? Yeah, just don't talk about your negatives. Oh, okay. Um, I, I mean, I liked the, the kind of message that you should be open to, you know, like feeling all of your feelings and open to the world and curious. And then you'll see things in a different light. Like in this case, they go from black and white to color. If you know, that's the case. Um, let's see what else did I like. Um, oh, I think they picked actual banned books to highlight um, in the town when they were, like talking about the library books um getting filled up like huckleberry finn is a banned book i'm pretty yeah. sure can't be having an n-word in books yeah just you um, know we just freely say it well we can't have it written down right um i'm pretty sure catcher in the rye is a banned book so i thought that was kind of clever that if if that was true the detail that they put into it um and I liked that, you know, at the end, they could, like, see things outside of Pleasantville. Like, their the worldview kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I, I liked in the end how, um, you know, uh, Toby Maguire's character was kind of like, there's no, like, right way or like a way things should be they're just like the way things are and like the way he you know humanity is so um and like it's okay to not know what comes next so i liked some of the messages um yeah i i liked it overall so i I like wait i like rich i like no 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 did you just hear what she said What's she said? She liked she it said, overall. She liked the movie overall. I did. Okay. I liked this movie too as a kid. This is this is gonna be Rachel's last episode. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like Rick, I like I like Reese Witherspoon's acting in Pleasantville. Okay. I thought of something I liked. Oh, that's that's the one thing you got. <laughs> the one good thing. Um, I really like the color palette when we got took like the colored version of the show of the movie mm-hmm. um it just like the brights really stood out and you know this is a time before like high def television and i'm sure that really popped when they did do the conversion to like a you know blu-ray or whatever um i liked that you know, we saw like some actors where I'm like, what are you, Paul Walker, what are you doing here? Right. That's Paul Walker. Driving a, driving a car. I see you. Right. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. wait. The, the movies, not, not his, not his. Not, oh, not... yeah. No, the, the movie. Oh, not, yeah. Not, 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 not the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like the idea of this movie where. Because like the beginnings of the movie when him and his friend are like um, quizzing each other on the show, it just got gave me those old vibes of um, Nick at Night, like Nick at Night before mm-hmm. before TV land, Nick at Night when because uh, it changed it changes every, every few years. So I feel like your Nick at Night was not the same as my Nick at Night, Rachel, and yours may oh. not have been the same as mine, Matt. But I remember like, well, maybe it was like Dick Van Dyke, Lucy, stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Dick, oh, okay. Dick Van Dyke, Lucy. Because eventually uh, they was like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and I'm like, I'm not. Yeah, that I remember old. that. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, like, it just gave me a vibes of like watching those old shows, and it's like this. This shows like 
six times as old as me because I'm a little kid. And it's just like so cool watching it. It just reminded me of like cable television of that era. And I feel like Uh in the 90s is when they were doing like these interesting things related to television. Like when we watch Tuned In, you know, like that's an interesting idea, you know? Uh Um, And so I like this movie on paper. I like the idea of this movie. And so that is a positive. Um, do we have any other things we want to put in there before we fucking destroy this movie? <laughs> well, me and Matt, Ra- Rachel's too fucking nice. Uh, well, I I'm have negative repeat. things to say. Reese, Reese Witherspoon in Pleasantville, she was on point. She was on point. Her acting yeah, was she was, she was doing her thing. Ple- and funny. In Pleasantville. And funny. Like, I'm not gonna yeah. say we don't see her funny because, like, she. Her her bread and butter is romantic comedies. Right. Legally Blonde is a funny movie, but it's just yeah, nice right. to see certain actors doing funny things. Right. But, okay, so before we truly destroy this movie, this movie made me realize I can't take Tobey Maguire seriously as a human. Not even an actor. <laughs> a human. Because it looks like he's holding back laughter after every line reading. And it's a serious scene. It's like, uh, I, I've always been this attuned my, my, at the end when he's like, you know, I've always been, you know, this kind of kid. Like, like, and I'm like, bro, you're about to bust out laughing. Like, you're not a good actor. Did Was this, was this the whole time? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it always looks like he's about to laugh. Right. I'm yeah. like... <laughs> There have been other white actors that could have done the things you've done. Why? Why are you this for? Like, is he a nepo baby? Like, what's happening here? But no, let's 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 get to the real reason why we hate this movie, Matt. Uh, you here? Hold up, hold up. All right, there's your soapbox. <laughs> All right, let me start off. Reese Witherspoon <laughs> acting in the '90s was fucking horrible. <laughs> I hated her acting uh, as when they were in the 90s. First of all, chewing that gum. That is so fucking annoying. And anybody who does stuff like that, don't ever do that again. As she's talking on the phone, like her popping that gum and chewing it, I was just like, oh, I just wanted to turn this movie off. That's number one. That was right out the gate. He's referencing his notes, people. Oh, no. I, this is all that's coming to Because I just I hated that. That's why I kept saying, like, she was so annoying and stupid and ditzy and i don't know maybe that's the 90s way or whatever she was just so much better when she got to pleasantville so i don't know what happened after that i mean she was pushing against the establish um the established setting so that's probably why you liked her more um but at first like i can tell how these times have changed me because when i was watching it and i was my first thought was damn reese you just met this dude and you already up love was lame with him trying to do things. But then my second thought was, oh, she grown. We we uh she can do whatever she want with her body. See, right. Women, I'll be listening. Okay. Also, the another one the other one I hated, I hated the cook. The, I uh, believe uh, the, the malt shop owner. Yes. I believe like everything. Everything was go- he was just an idiot all throughout this movie. He, and he's also a, he's an NPC man. Well just being forced like, to go off script. Right. But he still but like even when like you know they was banning things and doing everything in 2023. Imagine you paid a naked woman on your window in a right. small right. town. Right. right, and then he, then they did it again to where I was like, "Why? What is up with them, him? Like, when is painting a naked woman on public buildings ever appropriate?" In America, you did it once. They busted right. They busted your windows. Then him and Tom McGuire, you and do it again. Yeah, but they so had, like, re- but the, but then they referenced all the banned books, Matt. So yeah. So like, then... I just hated him. What did you say, Rachel? <laughs> Well, just like, where's the line? Like, I've seen naked statues in museums, and I've seen, you know, like, 
Well, and, I mean, I feel like there's well, like statue of limitation on that stuff. Like if you draw a new naked painting, that's an issue. But if you reference like a piece of quote unquote art, you have more of a pass, I feel like. Right. So and it's also, okay like, if it's old and has history, but not okay if it's new. Not okay if it's Mrs. So and so from down the street. No. Well, that's fair. That's fair. And I can't believe she ended up with him. That's I mean she her actual she could have done, so. like, done a lot better. I mean she could have done a lot better. A business owner, Matt? He's a business owner. Uh uh-uh. was um yeah, she um like you said, I go back to what you said. On paper, and what I remember as a kid, this was good, but like watching it, it was just He just wasn't good. Like, I get it. If like like the whole fire truck stuff, they're firemen, right? Mm-hmm. And I get how they they don't never do fires; they do cats. I get that. But for them not to know what a fire is, like they should know what a fire is. But there what? was never an episode about an actual fire. Like their only frame of reference is the events from the TV show. One. Well, <laughs> So I I was kind of coming at this from the lens of like, this is like one of those dystopian movies or dystopian novels. And like, Mm. they have things like that in those worlds. Like in Fahrenheit 451, the firemen set fire to the books. They don't put fires out. Like the world is just different. Okay. So in this, Mm. this universe, we have firefighters, but they don't handle fire. Their only sole purpose is cats yeah that's how i that's how i took that okay because then you'll be cat man and not fireman mm-hmm. well i mean what is a name right yeah okay so why are we not talking about the real issue of this movie about how we try to have a race allegory in a movie Without. with no black people mm-hmm. yeah i when did he not was like, like the lack when of he, when he said you when he was like, you're a colored girl, and they said no color, I was like... Really, movie? Wow. Like, right. I, was, I, was like... I, was, <laughs> I was with the movie until they started doing it, like, when they were like, oh, no, the the real... The, <laughs> the villain in this movie is racism. And I'm like, wait, what? No. Right. No! But also, I don't like that basically... The way the way that we end prejudice is for everyone to be the same. That is that is the moral of this movie, whether they wanted it to be or not. Wait, explain that because I did not get that. Mm -hmm. There was hostility. The town was essentially split in half because of the people that were in black and white and the people that were in color. And there, you know, they had the sham trial with Tobey Maguire and um, Jeff Daniels. And eventually the whole town became color. And then that is when we had peace because everyone was the same. Oh, I didn't take it as everyone was the same. I took it as like people changed to the same thing. They all conformed to the same frequency. Of we're all but in, in color, their so world, what conforming was the black and white, and color was non conforming, right? But we no no one is black and white anymore, so we are at a version of the previous status quo. There's nothing different. Like, if some of if mm-hmm. some people, if we would have ended the movie with some people still in black and white, then maybe we would have had like a message, maybe, but like. At the end of the day, if if all of our if the if the conceit of this movie is some people are different, and we end the movie with everybody is the same, what lessons do we take away from this? Gotcha. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see it like that. But that's a good point. So that's kind of like I'm like, why did I like this movie back in the day? <laughs> that's what I thought too. So yeah, um, I definitely it, liked it the like less the more I thought about it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. 
and maybe my I have a dirty mind, mm-hmm. but when Toby Maguire was putting the makeup on his mother, yeah, I kind of felt some, some kind of yeah, kind of vibes. That there. was not Same. that was not a son yeah. mother moment. I would right. not be surprised that they was fucking on set. Right, because it was like the way they shot it, how he slowly stroking her and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, he really not his his mother. That's really not his mother. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had a crush on that character too from watching right. the old episodes and whatnot. Right. Why y'all think that? Um, Yo, oh, go ahead, Rachel. Go ahead. Sorry, I had no, more negatives. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Um. Well, I just. I didn't like that. I mean, maybe I'll just pick this one. I didn't like, I hate in movies when they're like, twins are opposites. But that's going back in my other soapbox of like so, tropes with twins. Okay, Rachel. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to acknowledge that. What did y'all think the Rotten Tomatoes was? On? <laughs> no, I'm fucking, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. Um, I didn't really think about that. Like when they were like, they're twins, I was like, oh, I didn't remember that part because that really didn't factor into this movie at all. They didn't need to be twins, they could have just been their step siblings. And I also didn't get the TV repairman's role in the movie. Like, I obviously he gave them the remote to switch them into the tv show but like it wasn't clear what his motives were like he picked toby Maguire's character because he knew all these things about pleasantville but then they went and changed the world and then at the end that was okay like he left them i feel like he's like some of that was an element from an earlier script like okay (laughs) maybe he was satan (laughs) like like in tuned in I liked that it was Don Knotts. I thought that was funny. Yeah. You yes. know, and I I I I was with it in the beginning, just in the end, I was like, what was the point of him in the end? I just I didn't think there was yeah. Like, if anything, and also like if you think about it, villain. he should have been the true villain of the movie. Yeah. If he really wanted somebody, didn't he? He he could have just told him. I believe that if he would have been like, hey. Toby Maguire, you know all this stuff. You love this show. How about you? I let you be in the show for a day, whatever, whatever. I figured he would have done it. Yeah, yeah. But probably. for them just to be randomly thrown in there and every everything like that, it just if he would have just communicated with him what he was trying to do, I believe he would have Toby Maguire's character would have done it. I think, and then you wouldn't have got all the you wouldn't have done all the extra stuff because his because his character would have followed the rules my wheels are turning here and i feel like perhaps in a ver- an alternate version of the script um that sh- like it turns out pleasantville isn't a real show and it is just like some entity is going around and just adding people to this old show Ooh. and so like you bring the two siblings there and since toby mcguire is aware of how it should go it's not like basically eventually the people go on like their little set tracks and they just all become NPCs and like uh, Toby Maguire. It doesn't work on Toby Maguire because he's too familiar with the world, but his sister is slowly conforming and turning into her character. I feel like that would have been an interesting That'd movie. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, I wanted to point out one thing that uh, sounded very familiar to us these days. The mayor said when they were in a bowling alley to hold the values or they need to hold on to the values that always made this place great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got, yes. we got to make this shit great again, baby. Yeah. Um, I'm not that rhetoric. Yeah. It's, it's acceptable for me to call Matt baby. Just so we're all clear. <laughs> uh, what do y'all think the Rotten Tomatoes was on this movie? 80. Seventy-five. Eighty-six with a seventy-nine mm-hmm. percent audience score. Mm. Uh, movie came out in ninety-eight. Um, trivia question of the following, which actresses did not go for the role of Jennifer 
in Pleasantville, and Jennifer was Reese Witherspoon's character. A, Sarah Michelle Gellar, B, Melissa Joan Hart, or C, Rachel Lee Cook. Which of these three actors did not audition for the role? Rachel Lee Cook. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, Rachel, oh, sorry, uh, Melissa Joan Hart turned down the role of Jennifer slash Mary Sue. She was at the peak of her power at this time with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. Lastly, Rachel Lee Cook auditioned for the role, but it eventually went to Reese Witherspoon. Sarah Michelle Gellar was too busy with Buffy the Vampire Slayer to even think about this movie and Cruel Intentions Mm -hmm. and all the other shit she was doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's do a quick aside and do box office. So this movie came out in 1990, October of 1998. It opened at number one in the box office with $8 million. It beat Practical Magic. Is that the one with, yes, Sandra Bullock? Okay. And yes. Um, it knocked it out of the number one slot after one week. Um, Ants was in the box office. Bride of Chucky, Soldier, Rush Hour, Beloved, What Dreams May Come, Apt Pupil, and lastly, Night at the Roxbury. That was the top 10. Um, Pleasantville did not last long in the um, uh, number one slot. It got knocked out by a movie called Vampires the next week. And then it slid to number three the following week because number one in the box office was The Water Boy. Hmm. Also, Belly opened at number nine, Matt. Um, where is Pleasant Pleasantville dropped to number seven after um uh, Pleasantville dropped to number seven after four weeks in the box office. Um, we got I know what you did last summer and meet Joe Black entering the fray. Water Boy is still holding it down. Uh, let's do two more weeks. Then we got Rugrats movie and Enemy of the State pushing Pleasantville to number nine. And here we go. I want to get to that Thanksgiving weekend. Um, wow, Babe came out and Home oh. Fries. Home Fries opened at number eight, Rachel. Do you remember that movie? No, I don't remember Home Fries. No. If I remember, yes. I was like, if I remember correctly, it's a Drew Barry movie. Drew Barrymore. Uh, pe- pregnant Sally unknowingly falls for the stepfather of the deceased father of her baby and has to deal with his homicidal family. It is Drew Barrymore, and it looks like um, Luke Wilson on the cover. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's called Home Fries because like, I think she worked like at a fast food place or some shit like that. But... um. Pleasantville was number after six weeks in the box office. Pleasantville dropped to number 14, which is not good for 1998 when shit just lives at the movie theater, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Word of mouth right. wasn't working for it. Nah. All right. So let's run through this. Um, since every scene from the middle of the movie, um, had to be in some way digitally changed to have black and white characters interact with characters who are in color. Technically, this movie had the most digital effect shots until Star Wars Episode One. Um, so that's the show, guys. Um, another solid one. We talked about a lot of shit. I'm not a hundred percent sure how much of that is gonna stay because we was talking about some race stuff and some um some fucking um pineapple upside down parties. If you know, you know. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how much of that lasts, and or if I just reference something that was not in this episode. Uh, as always, thank you so much for sitting in and bullshitting with us, Rachel. Please plug your letterbox because you totally had that ready. Because you knew you were going to be on tonight. I do have it ready. And thanks for having me. My letterbox is Rach Elephant. I'm going to be honest. I didn't think you you were prepared. But all right. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening. Please rate, like, and review our podcast on your platform of choice. If you have any feedback, please email us at we used to talk pod at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube. X. 
formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Threads at We Used to Talk Pod. We don't actually post on Threads, but we have a Threads. Follow me on Letterbox at BOW1213 and Matt at Mr. King0257. Come back next week when we do another anime movie. Am I excited for this? No. Um, weathering with you. And like always, I don't know if this is a good episode, I don't know if it was a bad episode. But whatever you think about it, talk about it at work. Thank you for listening.